More than 20 soldiers were killed as a result of an October 3rd missile strike on Russian-occupied territory near Donetsk, including six officers from North Korea who came to confer with their Russian counterparts, Kiev Post's intelligence sources said. Three more North Korean servicemen were wounded. According to reports from Russian social media, prior to the missile strike, the Russians were demonstrating to North Korean representatives the training of personnel for assault actions and defense. Last year, Ukraine's main intelligence directorate, HUR, reported the arrival of a limited contingent of servicemen from North Korea to the temporarily occupied territory of Ukraine, including units of engineering troops, indicating active cooperation between Russia and North Korea. The Center for National Resistance reported in September 2023 that Russia was planning to bring North Korean citizens to the occupied territories of Donetsk and Luhansk for construction work. Moreover, Russian President Vladimir Putin, after meeting with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un in June of this year, persuaded his counterpart from Pyongyang to open diplomatic missions in Donetsk and Luhansk. The CNR assessed that the North Koreans were invited to ensure the supply of labor in these regions, as the Kremlin's war in Ukraine has resulted in a labor shortage throughout Russia and the occupied territories. Tver region of Russia has increased payments to new soldiers who sign a contract with the Russian Defense Ministry to 815,000 rubles, $8,550. There is also a federal payment, so a new recruit from Tver region will receive a one-time payment of about 1 million rubles, $10,500. The ad for recruits was targeted at wives, mothers, and grandmothers of potential recruits. It said, attention, instant payment of more than 1 million rubles, $10,500. You can repair the roof, balcony, and install all the glass in the window frames, and still have money left to go to Crimea. Send your husband, son, grandson to serve the motherland. Information appeared on Russian telegram channels that Russia has allocated 90 billion rubles, a most $1 billion, for payments to those who sign contracts with the Russian Defense Ministry. In recent months, Ukraine has lost control of a number of fairly significant cities, each after fierce fighting that sometimes lasted for months. The first on this list was Mariinka in December-January, followed by Avdivka, and recently the Ukrainian armed forces withdrew from Vuladar. According to Censor.net, the New York Times analyzed the course of the war over the past year. Journalists of the publication note that for external observers, Ukraine's slow retreat may seem like a final turn towards military defeat. However, Ukrainian commanders and military experts deny this. They say that there is a struggle on the front line that is not aimed at territorial gains, but at exhausting the enemy in order to break his ability to continue the fight. Being inferior to the aggressor in all types of military resources and weapons, Ukraine is forced to exchange territory for Russian losses, added Mykola Beleskov, an analyst at the government's Institute for Strategic Studies of Ukraine. The idea is to retreat from the city targeted by the aggressor after the Russians suffer maximum losses in their attempt to capture it. This war will not be decided by who controls Vuladar or other tactical frontline cities. It's about how many troops the Russians spent trying to capture Vuladar compared to the losses the Ukrainians suffered trying to hold it, said Franz Stefan Gadi, a military analyst based in Vienna. However, given Russia's ability to compensate for its huge losses, the question arises as to how much territory the Ukrainians will be forced to give up before the Russian army is exhausted, the NYT notes. Pasi Paroinen, a military expert at the Finnish think tank Blackbird Group, said that over the past two months, Russia has advanced at a pace unprecedented since the start of the war, seizing three times as much territory as in June and July. The NYT wonders how realistic Ukraine's strategy is, given that Vladimir Putin has put the economy on a war footing and shows no signs of giving up the fight. Analysts at the UK's Royal United Services Institute have calculated that at the current level of casualties and rate of new production, Russia is likely to exhaust its stockpile of armored fighting vehicles by 2026.
Russians keep saying the world envies them and everyone wants to move to Russia. This is a compilation of what many Russian cities actually look like. And they will continue looking like that because Putin will continue spending money on war, not his own people. Вот такие дороги, ребята, конкретные вот на, Захар... на Захарченко, смотрите, на Захарченко. Вот такие вот дороги. Вот. Танки здесь. Танки только проедут здесь. Мусорку вывезли, а вот это все осталось. Вот. Это расчетки разбросанные. Все выкинуто. И вот пошло. Мусорщики баки поставили уже на дорогу. Они постепенно, постепенно. Павла 52. Вид из окна. Называется из нашего окна площадь красная видна. А из нашего окна свалка жуткая видна, которую рециклинговая компания не убирает уже три дня. То есть мусорная реформа у нас в полном разгаре. И так постоянно. Да? Вот такой мусоропровод на Воронова 12В. Это девятый этаж. Кнопки у лифтов сломаны, не работают. Это восьмой этаж. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. Also, if you want to support Warthog Defense, please become our member and get early access to new videos, exclusive members only videos, and become administrator in comment section. The membership link is in the description. Rescues. Every day we had a guy last week at six rescues in six days. You know, he's doing the job every day.